Good afternoon. I'm Mark Hammond, South Carolina Secretary of State. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we cannot appear in person, but we still want to provide training for our notaries. Thank you for participating in the first ever virtual notary seminar. Your participation speaks volumes about you and tells me that you want to educate yourself about the duties of a notary for the state of South Carolina. We will keep the seminar to one hour and, uh, and answer questions at the end of our presentation. At this time, I would like to introduce Kateria Watkins, director of our notaries division. And again, I would like to thank you for participating in the first ever virtual notary seminar. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. I'm Kateria Watkins, Director of the Notaries Division for the South Carolina Secretary of State's Office. As Mr. Hammond stated, we will try to keep our seminar to approximately one hour and a lot for questions at the end as time permits. Please be sure to answer to enter all of your questions in the chat feature in the Microsoft Teams app. What is a notary public? Notaries public are public officers of the state of South Carolina that are commissioned to perform notarial acts. Notaries are appointed by the South Carolina governor and commissioned by the South Carolina Secretary of State. Notaries serve as impartial witnesses for the state in order to prevent fraud. You may perform a notary search on our website. Our website is located at sos.sc.gov. On the search, you may search for the notary's name and or the county to see if the notary is commissioned and also to see when their commission expires. So here you'll find a screenshot of our website. Once you get to the website, you'll click on where it says services and filings. Under the drop down feature, you'll click on notaries. And then you'll go ahead and click on the yellow icon that has notary search. In this search, you may type in the notary's name, first and last name, and you will also select the county. You do not have to select the county as just typing in the name is sufficient. Once you type in the name, you'll click search. And here's the notary's information. It'll show the notary's name as well as their county that they're registered out of and their expiration date. This is accessible on our website 24 hours a day. There are some qualifications in order to become a notary in South Carolina. You must be a registered voter in South Carolina. You must also be able to read and write in the English language. You must also be able to submit an application to our office with no misstatements or omissions of facts. The application can be found on our website. And again, that is sos.sc.gov. The application is the same for new notaries as well as notaries that are renewing their commission. It is very important that you use the application that is currently on our website as now notaries must indicate that they can read and write in the English language. You must complete both pages of the notary application, including having your signature notarized. You may not notarize your own signature. The date of your signature and the date of the notarization on the application must be identical. It is very important that you sign your name on the application the same way that you will be signing when you notarize documents in the future. Your name on the application must also match when you print your name exactly as you want to be commissioned. Here's our notary application. Towards the top of the application is where you'll enter in all of your personal identifying information to include your name, your physical street address in South Carolina, as well as a mail-in address if you have one. You have to indicate your county, as well as the last four digits of your social security number, and then your date of birth. Your voter registration number is also required. If you do not know your voter registration number, you may visit the South Carolina Elections Commission website at scvotes Dot org. The bottom portion of this application is where the legislative delegation of your county will complete. The second page here is where you will take your oath of office where you indicate that you do understand that you can read and write in the English language. You must also print your name 
Again, this is exactly as you wish to be commissioned. And then your name and your signature is then notarized by another notary public. Towards the bottom of this application is where you would find some statutory code of laws. There is a $25 filing fee for your new or renewal application. This may be payable to the Secretary of State's office in the form of a check or a money order. You must mail in your completed application and the fee to the legislative delegation for your county of residence. If you, your county of res residence is not located on the last page of our application, you will need to send your application to the South Carolina House of Representatives. Their name and address is also listed on the last page. They will then verify that you are a registered voter in South Carolina and then forward your application to our office. The application process can take anywhere from two to 12 business weeks, depending on the county that you reside in. If you are renewing your commission, we do recommend that you try to submit your application at least eight to 12 weeks in advance, so that way we can ensure that it's processed well before your commission expires. Applications and renewals for notary commissions can only be processed by the legislative delegation and then the Secretary of State's office. There are no additional requirements to become a notary or to renew your notary commission. When you become a notary though, you may receive mailings from notary associations or groups that are outside of the Secretary of State's office. Remember that membership to these groups is completely optional. It's not a requirement for you to join any of these associations. Your notary commission. If for some reason you receive your commission back in the mail and there's any typographical error, please be sure to reach out to our office and we can make the necessary corrections and send you a corrected commission. But please note, the Secretary of State's office does not issue any notary commission numbers. The statute does require notaries to enroll their commissions with their county clerk of court's office within 15 days of being commissioned. You will enroll your notary commission with the clerk of court in the county where you live and are registered to vote. The clerk of court may charge a $10 filing fee to enroll your commission with their office. If you are a notary and have not enrolled your commission with your county clerk of court's office, please do so as soon as possible. Although there is no penalty for going beyond the 15 day window, it is important that you enroll your commission still. If you move to a new county, enroll your commission with the clerk of court in your new county. If you change your name and receive a new commission, enroll your new commission with the clerk of court. When you renew your commission, you must also enroll with the clerk of court in order to update your term and your expiration date. You must notify the Secretary of State's office when any of the following changes occur. You either change your address or you change your name. Notification must be filed within 45 days after one of these changes have occurred. There is a change in status application that may be found on our website. If you have changed your name or your address, you must file this change in status application prior to completing a renewal application. Failure to do so may result in rejection of your renewal application because the information does not match. To change your name and or your address, please complete this change in status form. There will be a $10 filing fee to change your name and or your address. You can also request a duplicate commission on the same form. There is a $10 filing fee to request the duplicate commission. This form will need to be properly notarized and that notarization date must match the date that you sign as well as the notary sign. As with your original application, the way that you sign and print your new name when you file is the way you will be commissioned and should match the way you intend to notarize documents in the future. Please make sure that you do not change the way that you notarize documents until your name change has been filed with our office and you receive a new commission. For some odd reason you decide to resign and no longer want to be qualified as a notary, you will need to complete the change in status form for resignations. There is no filing fee for this form. However, you still must get your name and signature notarized by another notary public. 
You will mail this form to our office and we will update your profile accordingly. In the untimely death of a notary public during their term of commission, the notary's personal representative must notify the Secretary of State's office in writing. They must also destroy or deface the notary seals so that they cannot be misused, as we are trying to prevent fraudulent activity in South Carolina. If you are not comfortable destroying or defacing the notary stamp or seal, you may mail them directly to our office and we will destroy of them properly. A notary's commission lasts for a consecutive 10-year period. A notary's jurisdiction extends throughout the state of South Carolina. A notary must not perform any notarizations outside the boundaries of South Carolina. However, if someone brings you a document from another state or another county, you may notarize the document as long as the person signing appears before you in South Carolina to execute the document. South Carolina does not allow for out-of-state residents to become South Carolina notaries, even if they work in the state. A South Carolina notary must reside in South Carolina and be registered to vote in the state of South Carolina. Your notary seal and expiration date. The statute requires that a notary use a seal and list their expiration date of his or her commission for notarial act. A stamp or seal must include the notary's name, as well as the words notary public and state of South Carolina. Notaries may use a rubber stamp or an embosser seal. To the far left, you'll see an image of an embosser seal. This is the tool that actually crimps the document and makes an indentation on it. The second icon is an example of a rubber stamp. This has an ink pad and clearly identifies the notary's name, their commission, as well as state of South Carolina. That's identified in the third image. The fourth image is an example of that embosser seal. You can see the ridges outlined on the outside of the notary's name. Although statute states that the use of a seal or an expiration date is required, it also states that a lack of seal or expiration date does not render a notarial act invalid if the official title is applied. However, other states and countries may require that the seal and expiration date is listed, so it is important to include both when notarizing documents that are going outside of South Carolina. The law does not specifically define a notary's official title, but some examples would include Notary Public, Notary Public of South Carolina, and South Carolina Notary Public. Now here's some notarial acts. We'll briefly cover each one. Oaths, affirmations, attestations, jurats, notarial certificate, acknowledgement, verification or proof, affidavit. An oath is a notarial act in which a notary certifies that at a single time and place, an individual appeared in person before a notary was personally known to or identified by the notary using satisfactory evidence, and the individual made a vow of truthfulness on penalty of perjury while invoking a deity or using the form of a word swear. An affirmation is similar to an oath. However, it's when the individual makes a vow of truthfulness on penalty of perjury based on personal honor and without invoking a deity or using a form of the word swear. Attestations and jurats. An attestation is a completion of a certificate by a notary who has performed a notarial act. A jurat is a notary certificate evidencing the administration of an oath or affirmation. A notarial certificate is the portion of the record that is completed by the notary, which bears the notary's signature and seal and states the facts attested by the notary on that record. And here is what I like to call a perfect proper notarization. It includes the jurat statement, sworn and subscribed before me. It lists the date of the notarization. It has the notary's name as well as their signature. Their stamp to the right also bears the notary's name as well as their title, notary public, and then the state, South Carolina. Underneath, you also see the notary's title again as well as their expiration date. 
If a seal is not used, a notary's name must be printed near his or her signature. Acknowledgement. An acknowledgement is a notarial act where a notary certifies that at a single time and place, the following occurred. An individual appeared in person before the notary and presented a record. The notary personally knew the individual or identified the individual through satisfactory evidence. The individual signed the record while in the physical presence of the notary and while being personally observed signing the record by the notary. A verification or proof is a notarial act in which the notary certifies that an individual appeared in person before the notary, the individual was personally known to the notary or identified with satisfactory evidence, the individual was not a party to or beneficiary of the transaction, the individual took an oath or gave an affirmation and testified that he or she is a subscribing witness and then witnessed the principal sign the record or received acknowledgement of the principal's signature from the principal who signed the record. Affidavits might be the more common term that everyone has heard of. Affidavits are voluntarily written statements made by a person either under oath or affirmation before a notary. They are often used in court proceedings and legal matters, but they may be used for a variety of purposes. Marriage ceremonies. According to the South Carolina Code of Laws, persons authorized to administer oaths in the state of South Carolina, including notaries public, are authorized to perform marriage ceremonies. The process, first, the couple applies for a marriage license with the South Carolina Probate Court which then will issue three copies of the license. The couple and the notary must then sign all three copies. The spouses should sign using their legal names, regardless of whether they intend to change their names after the marriage ceremony. For example, a bride who intends to change her name after the marriage ceremony would sign using her maiden name. The couple will then keep one copy and the notary files the other two copies with the probate court that issued the license. A notarial act must be attested by the signature of the notary, again exactly shown on the notary's commission, the legible appearance of the notary's name, exactly as shown on the notary's commission, the statement of the date that the notary commission expires. The legible appearance of a notary's name and expiration date may appear in the notary stamp or seal. However, if a seal is not used, the notary's name must be legibly printed near his or her signature. You should also make sure that the document includes the notarial language, such as sworn and subscribed before me. A notary must sign by hand in ink and only after the notarial act is performed. This is a requirement for notarial acts. A notary with a disability may use a signature stamp only upon prior approval by the Secretary of State's office. By performing a notarial act, a notary public certifies that the signer is in the notary's presence at the time the notary act is performed. The signer is either personally known to the notary or has provided satisfactory evidence of his or her identity. Satisfactory evidence means a current identification document or an oath of credible witness known to the notary or an oath of two witnesses who each present a current identification document. A current identification document means either a document is issued by a state or federal agency that includes a photographic image of the individual's face, an image of the individual's signature, and a physical description of the individual, or a current passport without a physical description of the individual. And we'll cover some notary duty. Duty. By performing a notarial act, a notary public certifies that in his or her judgment, the signer did not appear to be incompetent, lacking in understanding of the nature and consequence of the transaction regarding the notarial act, or acting involuntarily under duress or under undue influence. And here's some notary don'ts. 
Don't notarize your own signature. Don't certify copies of documents. Don't notarize incomplete or blank documents. Don't notarize the document without notarial certificate wording. Don't notarize for a subscribing witness when the witness is not in your presence at the time the notarial act is performed. Don't post date or predate notarizations. Don't notarize outside the state of South Carolina. Don't notarize a document when the notary is a signer of a party to or beneficiary of the document that is being notarized. There are some exceptions to this rule. They include court employees, notaries that are not parties to a document but are named in the document, such as a person to the document will be sent to after it's recorded, a trustee in a deed of trust, the drafter of the document, or an attorney for a party of the document. Don't notarize the document where you will directly receive a commission, a fee, interest or other consideration exceeding permissible fees for notarial acts. There are some exceptions to this rule as well and they include fees or other consideration paid for services by either licensed attorneys, licensed real estate brokers, salespersons, motor vehicle dealers, and bankers. Now there are some foreign language requirements pursuant to the South Carolina Code of Laws. Notaries public cannot use the term notorio publico or its non-English equivalent in any advertisements or notices. If you are a notary public who is not an attorney and advertise your services in a language other than English, you must include the following notice in English and in the foreign language in which you are advertising. I am not an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of South Carolina and I may not give legal advice or accept fees for legal advice. Special circumstances. There may be special circumstances where a notary is asked to notarize for a principal who cannot physically sign a document or who can only sign using a mark. The South Carolina Code of Laws provides for specific procedures to follow when notarizing for a principal under these circumstances. The first special circumstance is if you are asked to notarize a document for a person who can only sign using a mark, use the following procedure. One, the mark must be made in the notary's presence. Two, below the mark, the notary should write mark affixed by, name signer of the mark, in presence of the undersigned notary. And three, the notary then notarizes the signature by mark. The special circumstances, the second one, is if the principal cannot sign at all and directs another person to sign on his or her behalf. Use the following procedure. One, the principal must direct the designee to sign in the presence of the notary and two witnesses. The designee signs the principal's name in front of the notary and witnesses, and the witnesses sign their names near the principal's signature, which is the second one. The third step, the notary writes below the principal signature, signature affixed by, designee, and presence of, and then names the principal and the witnesses. And lastly, the notary then notarizes the signature. In the last special circumstance, if the principal cannot sign at all, he or she can direct the notary to sign on his or her behalf. In this circumstance, use the following procedure. The principal must direct the notary to sign the record in the presence of two witnesses, which is the first step. Two, the notary signs the principal's name in the presence of the principal and witnesses, and both witnesses will then sign their names near the principal's signature. Three, the notary writes below the principal's signature, signature affixed by the notary at the direction of, name the principal, and also in the presence of, name the witnesses. And four, the notary then notarizes the signature. There are fees for notarial acts that you may charge. Pursuant to the South Carolina Code of Laws, notaries public may charge up to $5 per notarial act. If you plan to charge a fee, you must display your fee schedule. 
travel fees. Notaries public are permitted to charge travel fees under the following conditions. The travel fees are agreed upon by the notary and the requesting party in advance. And the notary clearly explains to the requesting party that the travel fee is separate from the $5 notarial fee and is not specified or mandated by law. Some frequently asked questions. Are attorneys automatically notaries? No. Attorneys must apply to become a notary like any other member of the public. As a South Carolina notary, am I required to be bonded? No. South Carolina law does not require notaries to be bonded. Where do I report notary misconduct? The Secretary of State's office is not authorized to investigate or penalize notaries for alleged misconduct. If you suspect that a notary has violated notary laws, you should contact your local law enforcement agency. What is a notary journal and am I required to keep one? A notary journal is a journal that you keep to record your notarial acts. South Carolina does not require notaries to keep a journal of their notarial acts, but it is strongly encouraged. If you keep a journal and are ever asked about a specific notarization that you performed, your journal may be used as a reference tool. Now, criminal penalties. A person who commits any of the following acts is guilty of a misdemeanor and subject to a fine of up to $500 or imprisonment of up to 30 days or both. Performing a notarial act for a principal or subscribing witness who has not appeared in person before the notary performing a notarial act without personal knowledge or satisfactory evidence of the identity of the principal or subscribing witness, performing a notarial act if the notary knows that it is false or fraudulent, holding oneself out to the public as a notary without a notary commission, performing a notarial act if your commission is expired, suspended, or restricted, Performing a notarial act before taking the oath of office. Performing a notarial act with the knowledge that you are not a notary. Using, concealing, defacing, or destroying a notary seal or notarial records. Knowingly soliciting, coercing, or materially influencing a notary to commit official misconduct. Authentications and apostilles. The Office of the Secretary of State is the authority which authenticates documents to be sent to another country. Some examples of documents that are brought in for authentications are vital records, school transcripts, international adoptions, etc. For the Office of the Secretary of State to authenticate a document, it must be signed by a public official whose signature is on file with the Secretary of State's office, which includes notaries public. If you are notarizing a document to be sent overseas, please include your seal, your expiration date, and print your name as you are commissioned clearly so that your name and your signature is listed properly. You must also include a notarial statement, for example, sworn and subscribe before me. A country that is receiving the document may reject it if it was not notarized properly. The Secretary of State's office will issue one of two types of certificates for a document. If the document is going to a country that is a member of the Hague Convention abolishing the requirement of legalization for foreign public documents, the office will attach an apostille, and this document may be sent directly to the destination country. If the document is going to a country that is not a member of the Hague Convention, the office will attach an authentication. The document must be then sent to the U.S. Department of State for further authentication before it can be sent to your destination country. The Secretary of State's office may refuse to provide an authentication or apostille if it is believed to be requested for an unlawful or improper purpose. If the document is in a foreign language and not accompanied by an English translation, a foreign language document must be accompanied by a complete translation of the original document where the translator's signature is notarized by a South Carolina notary. We may also refuse 
an authentication if the seal or signature on the document cannot be authenticated by the Secretary of State or an, another official. If the seal or signature is an official of another state or another country, and if the document is a photocopy or reproduction of a seal or a signature. Now we'll cover photocopies and vital records. Notaries cannot certify photocopies. However, the document holder may sign an affidavit that certifies the photocopy, which is then notarized, except for when a certified copy is available from an official source. A common example are vital records. Notaries cannot certify vital records though. Certification of vital records must be done by officials in the country, the state, or the county offices that issue and keep these records. Vital records include birth certificates, marriage licenses, death certificates, divorce decrees, and documents of that nature. There are some documents though in which affidavits may be authenticated for. A few examples are diplomas, school transcripts, passports, a driver's license, or a driver's record. However, it is important to note that our office cannot authenticate affidavits from which a certified copy may be obtained from an official source. So an example of that will be a SLED background check. These cannot be ordered online. They must be ordered directly through SLED and then signed and notarized by a SLED employee. A vital record, a marriage or a death certificate. Unauthorized practice of law. A notary public who is not an attorney that is licensed to practice law in South Carolina may not render a service that constitutes the unauthorized practice of law. This includes assisting another person in drafting, completing, selecting, or understanding a record or transaction that requires a notarial act. Unless you are a member of the South Carolina Bar or otherwise authorized to perform legal activities in South Carolina, by the Supreme Court, you are prohibited from the practice of law. This was outlined in the state of South Carolina versus Buyers Service Company in 1987. Other unauthorized practice of law examples include preparation of legal documents, giving legal advice or answering legal questions, appearing in court on behalf of someone else, performing a real estate or mortgage closing, title search and preparation of title documents. But the area that seems to create the most confusion as to what falls under the unauthorized practice of law is real estate. The South Carolina Supreme Court has held that an attorney must conduct all real estate and mortgage loan closings. However, a notary may notarize loan modification documents without an attorney present as long as the notary does not provide any legal advice. There are some criminal liabilities according to the South Carolina Code of Laws for a person who engages in unauthorized practice of law. They may be guilty of a felony and upon conviction must be fined not more than $5,000 or imprisoned not more than five years or both. And this is the penalty per offense. So when asked legal questions or approach for legal advice, we always recommend just say no. For more information on unauthorized practice of law, please visit the South Carolina Bar's website. Notorio Publico Fraud. Notorio Publico Fraud occurs when individuals dishonestly represent themselves as attorneys or persons qualified to provide legal advice or services. They are victimizing members of immigrant communities who associate a different meaning to the term notorio publica. Because this term has different meanings in parts of Latin America, it may be confusing to immigrants. Many of those who identify themselves as notorios publicos are not notaries public and therefore are not authorized to perform notarial acts. These individuals often provide services which constitute the unauthorized practice of law. So as a reminder, 
pursuant to the South Carolina Code of Law governing notaries, a notary cannot use the term notorio publico in any advertisements or notices. Complaints regarding unauthorized practice of law may be directed to the South Carolina Attorney General's Office, the local solicitor's offices. In addition to the offices listed above, complaints regarding notorious publico may also be directed to the South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs and the South Carolina Department of Labor Licensing and Regulations, and their contact information has been outlined for you. That concludes our first ever virtual notary seminar. And we do currently have time for a few questions, so we'll gather your questions now. Okay, our first question. Can you notarize for a family member? The notary laws do not prohibit notarizing for family members. However, the notary laws do prohibit notarizing a document when you will benefit from the document in some way. A common example is a will. Therefore, do not notarize for a family member or for anyone else that you feel like you will benefit from the underlying document. Our next question, should I use a rubber stamp or an embossed seal? Both rubber stamp and embossed seals are permissible. As a practical matter though, a rubber stamp is better for documents that will need to be scanned or emailed. Our next question, can a notary also be a witness? A notary most likely can be a witness so long as the notary is not notarizing his or her own signature. Different documents have different requirements, so it may be wise to consult with an attorney. Our next question, does the notary and signer have to be in the same place or can a notarization be done via WebEx, Zoom, etc.? A notary must be in the physical presence of the signer. South Carolina does not have laws that permit remote notarizations at this time. Excuse me. Our next question, if a notary does not use a seal, is the document invalid? Excuse me. No, lack of a seal or expiration date does not invalidate a document as long as the notary's official title is attached to it. And we covered that in the seminar. Our next question Can you backdate or postdate a notarization? Unfortunately, no. A notarization must date, a notary, excuse me, must date the notarization the day that it is performed. So they may not backdate or postdate for the future. They must sign and date it the date that it is performed. Our next question, can I certify a copy of a document? No. Notaries in South Carolina are not authorized to certify a copy of a document. However, it's the document holder that makes a statement that it is a copy, and then the notary notarizes that statement. And our last question that we have here, where can I find marriage vows to perform a wedding? There are not specific requirements for how to conduct a marriage ceremony in South Carolina. Though you do need to make sure that the couple takes the oath as part of their vows, we do have sample vows 
and our notary public manual found on our website. Okay. Kateria, I would like to thank you for the presentation and uh, I would also like to thank our notaries and those who would like to become a notary for watching today and participating in this first ever virtual notary seminar. And uh, I do look forward to the time that uh, we will be able to go back and uh, have these presentations on location. I love meeting our notaries from all across the state. And uh, what, uh, before we end, I would like to thank one other person and I would like to thank the IT staff uh, in the Secretary of State's office for helping put this presentation together. So I hope everyone out there stays safe. And again, thank you for watching. Our contact information is listed here. The Secretary of State is located at 1205 Pendleton Street, Suite 525 in Columbia. Our web address again, sos.sc.gov. Thank you, and any additional questions that you may have posted will be posted to our website after this seminar has aired, and we'll be sure to address all questions that you may have provided in the chat feature. There are helpful links also indicated down below. We thank you so much for your time and please stay safe.